Welcome to the second episode of uh, Belfry Offense, and uh, I wanted to have a podcast that allowed me to dig in a little bit deeper than what you can in the pages of a book, um, and so we're going to do this podcast and, and see how many topics we can go through and, and get a deeper dive on it. Today, what I want to go through is, is two kind of, two elements that I think are, they go together. And that is heaviness at the puck and pressure presence. So these are two concepts that uh, that get talked about, particularly the heaviness at the puck. Pressure presence, not so much, but definitely uh, a heaviness at the puck. You hear about it particularly every playoffs. Uh, every time there's a trade in the NHL, you'll hear teams describe players while he's heavy. Uh, on the puck or or whatever. So first, I've dug into this pretty uh, pretty intensely uh, over the years to try to figure out one what it really is uh, when you really break it down, um, and then the second part is what it is and what it's not. Then you got to that's the first part. Then the second part is figure out. When players aren't heavy on the puck, what does that actually mean? Like, what is it that they're not doing? And then, is there any way we can influence players who aren't as heavy on the puck and make them heavier? And there are some a lot of things that you can do to make players heavier on the puck. And heaviness at the puck is a thing. It is definitely a thing. It's, it's something that is, is required. It's important that players learn to become heavier on the puck. And so I want to kind of dig into... Into what the, into what that actually actually means and and its correlation or relationship to pressure presence, which is another which is a way of you being pr- heavier on a puck. So, um, what I think heaviness at the puck and and this is what I figured out over the years when I first started studying heaviness at the puck. It was literally that the heaviness at the puck. So player on the puck. Someone coming in to try to steal it from them, or or the player is trying to take a puck from someone else. What what is that? What are they doing? And it's the moments that are right at the at the the moment of truth. Does the is the player able to resist a takeaway, physical contact? Can they manage themselves in small space, manage the puck in small space, and be able to find their way out of that? Or um, are they able to? close space quickly and rake a pick, rake a puck right off someone's stick. Are they able to do that? So those, those things are what I was focusing on. And, and there's a lot that goes into, into that, but that's not where I should have started the focus. The real focus in pressure, in the heaviness at the puck is actually, you can trace it back to positional discipline. Players who are in good positions, especially early positions, have a way of being able to get there often enough to be able to put pressure on the puck and to become heavier. So step one is not once the player is there. Step one is before the event occurs, where were they? What proximity are they to the puck? Can they make a play at the puck? Because that's a that's a, a major factor. So, the first step to becoming heavier on the puck is to put you in a position where you can compete for pucks more frequently, because you're in better spots. So that's that's really the first the first step. And you know, like again, it, there's a duality to it, and this is what makes it difficult. It's there's there's having the puck. And withstanding physical and uh, physical pressure, and then there's being able to go win a puck back. So those two things are happening, and sometimes they happen one and the other. You lose a puck, and then you win it right back. So uh, there's there's a lot that goes into it. So what what pressure presence is is trying to establish the the defensive shape prior or just be in the moments before a takeaway so that the options of the puck carrier, for example, are much, much less. So if I'm trying to win a puck back, uh, if, if I, 
and the other people around me are in good positions and we're able to either uh, eliminate options, uh, discourage options, or we're just in a good position where it's a bit smothering, then it leaves the puck carrier in a vulnerable position where they do have to now stand and hold the puck. So that's, you put the puck, puck carrier in an awkward spot so that makes it where they have to be heavier on a puck than they than they would like to be. So that's kind of the, that's, that's a major, major part of it. And then the other part of it is when we get the puck, can we then attack right away? And so that's pressure presence is being organizing the group to be able to win the puck back. And then once we do get the puck, that we're able to attack right away and, and have that become uh, have, have that become a major part of, of what we're trying to do. So um, the, the one thing about that, that's really interesting about, about um, being heavy on the puck is when a player is known for being heavy on the puck, we, we talk about them like in small space where it's difficult to get the puck from them. They have like a heavy stick. Uh, you can't stick, li stick lift them easily. They have great puck protection skills. They got great use of their hips. Um, they can use the wall as another man to shield. Um, there's a lot of different things that, that they can do. And what, what we want to be able to do is initially reduce the amount of time in which you are in those situations. So uh, on the, on the, when you have the puck, part of being heavy on the puck is making it difficult for others to lean on you. So the easiest way to make it harder for people to lean on you is when you move the puck. So puck movement and being able to put manage the puck in a way that makes it difficult for the opponent to be able to be in position to pressure you, that's a way of being heavy. And that was something that I really grossly misunderstood early on in the process. And not only did I misunderstood it, I didn't even look at it to start. I, I, I was already way past that. And then the longer I looked at it, the more instances I looked at it, I started to, I was, so to give you an example, I would get a, a list of all the times in which a player was confronted. And I would go through that list. So, okay, here's a player, and then there's a competitive situation, and then that's the thing I want to look at. Okay, what are they doing with their hips, their body, this and that? Uh, how, what, how are they using puck protection, using the boards, all that sort of stuff. And then the ones where the player got it and moved it, I was, like, upset. I was like, oh, geez, like, that would have been a good one. Like, that situation was good, but the player moved it. So then I skip on to the next one. And then, oh, there's another one. Yep, player gets it. And then as the play is starting to close down on them, they move it. Ah, oh, I got to move down to the next one. No, that's a good play. That is part of being heavy is recognizing when there's pressure and not allowing the pressure to come down on you and being able to make uh, being able to make a play prior to the pressure coming. And then when you look at it from a bigger picture say okay well why was the player able to make a play well oh look there's people that are moving they're in better they're in good spots there's predictability to their to their positioning that allows the puck carrier to make some more automated plays well that's heaviness the the team is playing heavy because you can't get the puck from them because the puck is moving and it was just so funny once I realized it. I was like, oh my God, all these ones that I was clipping through, like flipping by and actually getting upset with, were like, oh, that would have been a good one. But the player moved the puck. Like those were all ones that I should have watched. So of course I had to go all the way back and go through all of them again and start realizing like what are the circumstances and is this, could you classify this as something in which it was heavy? And I, I've determined that I think the first one of the first pieces of being heavy on the puck is being is everyone being in good position because then we can move the puck and we can avoid the amount of situations in which or reduce the number of situations in which we have to stand and deliver this heaviness on the puck and yet we can be heavier more frequently because we're harder to get the puck from so that's that's where i started to go and where this kind of was really interesting was um, I did a little work with 
uh, Thomas Pacina and the Czech uh, women's national team prior to the last Olympics. And one of the things that I was saying to him was that the kids were too, the girls were too interested in puck protection and not enough interested in change of side. And for me, they would get pucks and they would stop in a corner and they would get on in this puck protection. And then of course, they would be playing three versus five. And it's just very difficult to play that way. And my thoughts were, why put yourself in that situation to begin with? Invite the pressure into the corner and change sides. That's really hard to play against. That's, in, in, in effect, it's very heavy, is if you can manage and move the puck effectively, that's a way of being heavy on the puck. So I thought that that was a really interesting uh, aspect to look at, is the number of times in which the puck carrier was in the offensive zone, in the corner, stopped, trying to protect the puck, and uh, invariably a lot of those situations go to chains of board battles. So players protecting the puck, and then, of course, there's not an immediate play. Play closes down on them, so then they pitch it uh, down the wall or up the wall, and then there's another board battle that happens, and then there's another board battle that happens, and eventually the other team gets it, and, and out you go. Or it breaks down, and then ultimately you're, you're able to you know maintain possession or get it into open ice, but it's really hard to do it that way. And so... Uh, this is not to say that you want to move the puck every time because there are going to be times you have to stand and deliver. And in those times, you want to be able to have good puck protection skills. You want to be able to use your hips effectively. got to have good skating. got to understand spacing, particularly your outside foot to the wall, making sure that you can rotate that foot uh, fully all the way around so that you can move, making sure you understand how to be perpendicular to the wall, making sure you keep your sight lines making sure you spin, you have soft shoulders, soft hips, all those things are all part of being heavy. Um, being able to uh, push the, pull the puck close to your feet, keep your hands off the puck and use your body so that when the players like slashes your stick or pushes your elbow, you're not on the stick. You have that great feel for having your stick actually on the puck. That's all major part of being heavy I don't want to dismiss that because that is a really important part and we want every player to be effective in that but that's not the only way and that's what I wanted to highlight here in the book is that this this idea towards heaviness is much more than just that on uh, the, the battle that occurs at the puck there's a lot more to it and you can actually be heavier players can become heavier if they Pull the pull the defense into that play and then move the puck, particularly on change of side. Then you can really become what I would consider to be much more heavy. The other thing is in puck recovery when you're you know you're shooting players in a good spot, they're able to recover the puck. Uh, that becomes heavy because it's defeating emotionally to have a shot taken and then you don't recover the puck and the other team is able to sustain offensive zone time that has a way of draining the defensive energy. And so that's an important aspect of it as well. But that, but puck recovery starts with positional discipline. You have to be in the right spot. If you're not, you're now going to be chasing the play. So that's why when I laid this out in the book, I was really conscious about trying to really point out that positional discipline is really... Uh, the most important piece because then that allows you to move the puck or it allows you to establish like if you have the puck it allows you to move it it also puts people in position where they can help you they can set a pick for you set a screen they can move into spaces where they can pop pucks to you you know they can roll and find you on uh, on the side and now you can get off the wall or out of that small space situation and make it harder on the defensive team that's on the defensive side. On the offensive side, or, or, or on the that was on the offensive side. On the defensive side, that's having pressure presence. So being within a range of where you could then pressure the puck, and so it's it's a, an ability to be able to uh, force the puck carrier to have to eat the puck and, and now control it. So one of the things that you know I studied quite a, quite a bit was cutbacks and. 
uh, the best part about a cutback is, you know, building space off the wall. You build a trap door. You need to buy extra time because there isn't an immediate play. Now you can cut back into that space. The problem is when you cut back, that's a, an invitation. If you haven't controlled the feet of the defender, it's an invitation for the pressure to then close that space even more. So a cutback can kind of create more problems than it solves if you don't do it right. And oftentimes we can get... Uh, if you can angle properly, if you have great stick, first, sorry, first you're in good position, then you can angle from that position, you can get a good stick in there, you can force the offensive player to turn, now you are you have a, an ability to then create a heaviness where it becomes very difficult for the defense, uh, the, the offensive team, to be able to move the puck from there. So you can contain it, stop it, and then you can move in, to ultimately get the ultimately get the takeaway, um, the commitment to be able to play through traffic and have a relentless mentality is obviously really important. But it's not chasing someone around; it's angles and it's working together and it's a team thing. So, I guess the moral of this story as it relates to the combination of pressure presence and heaviness at the puck is I've taken what would normally be puck protection as an individual skill or maybe two people working together and I think it's much more group and the more that the group is able to move in sync and, in, and with a purpose the easier it is for you to be heavy and it easier is for people who may not normally be heavy, to become heavier and make heavier plays to make it difficult for the defensive team to control them. Or a team that, a, a player who has a difficult time, maybe if I put them in a one-on-one -on -one situation, having to stop the puck physically, to make a contact, to get under somebody and rake the puck off their stick, they, sometimes that's difficult for people to do, but they could angle, they could be in a good position First, they could angle, they could have a good stick, they could force you into a small space. Well, then now it becomes easier. They might even be able to force you into somebody else. And now between the two of you, you can make it a much more challenging for the puck carrier to be able to control the puck. And you can keep the puck there. So I, th I just think that um, my definition of heaviness at the puck has, has changed over the last little while. And I wanted to share that in this book about what I think it is and I, I don't I no longer only think about it as an individual skill and you know we used to we used to have and I would do this all the time I would have oh we're going to work on puck protection today okay so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have the puck carrier get the puck and I'm going to get them to turn their back on the defender and use their hips and their body and learn how to read you know, where the stick is and, and go away from the stick and be able to use their uh, inside edges and inside uh, outside weight shift, all those uh, skills to be able to protect the puck. I don't do that anymore. I, I think that's your last resort, not the first one. So I used to do it first. Now I do that last. I'm like, uh, first, we want to be in open space. If we can't be in open space and now we're getting into smaller space, then we need to be perpendicular from the wall. We also need to preserve space between us and the wall so we always have a trap door or space to move into if we need to extend the possession. Really, we'd like to invite the pressure and move the puck. If we're not able to do that and then now the pressure gets uh, more on top of us, then we want to invite the pressure in and roll so that the pressure gets caught on the wrong side of the body and now we have an immediate out on the other side. If there's no immediate out on that side, and now we're really stuck, well now you know we're looking to try to find ways to build up, build more space to get off the wall or at least ex extend that possession. But I'm trying to keep perpendicular as much as possible, my shoulders perpendicular to the wall so that I can maintain my vision, always have the spin, I can control my outside foot, the radius of the spin. If I need to spin, the, that I have to have the outside foot in, in a space that allows me to utilize the wall or not get not get jammed up on the wall is is more to the point so that's a that's a critical aspect of of what I, of what it is that I'm talking about and then the last piece is oh if you have to have the guy on your back well then this is how we manage it so it's kind of like it went from first 
to now last because I think that there's many ways to protect the puck, many better, more effective ways to protect the puck than have that be the first thing where you're going to just invite pressure and I'll take it on your back and and uh, and control because I think that the more the players who are most effective in those air situations with people on their back, those players tend to go into chains of board battles. Players who are not uh, in those situations where people are on their back, they tend to make plays. They don't get caught in those situations. So uh, as as frequently, if you can't play and not be in those situations. So it's not to say, okay, well now Daryl's saying like, you know, you don't need to have, you don't need to practice someone on your back. Or no, you do. You have to have that skill. But I'm saying these other skills are also important, and we tend to skip past those, or we we go right to this last one. I think it is last, and rather than it being first, I'd rather us get more effective in those small areas of like, hey, like, if you can invite the pressure into small space and then move the puck to somebody who can skate onto that touch and move it to the other side of the ice, like, that is hard to play against. And so we should be valuing that as our first skill, that ability to do that. And maybe... If we're real good, we invite the pressure in, we move it, we jump by that pressure, and we beat the pressure back into the middle of the ice. Now we're really compounding the value of that particular skill. So to me, those are things that I think are, are really important that go into that, into that pressure presence. I'm just going to check and see if there's anything uh, left. Uh, oh, the one thing that I, I wanted to also uh, talk about and this will be the last piece of this, is we tend to talk to players about passing the puck, like being heavy on the puck. And the dichotomy of, of that is, is when you're under a lot of pressure, that is, there's a lot of tension. The body gets very tense with that situation. Um, you know, you're, 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 you're gripping the stick and you're, you're trying to be heavy and your body, your, your, your low center of gravity is low and you're leaning into physical contact and all of that stuff is a grit factor to it. The issue with grit factor is that it's difficult to then be able to make good plays from there. So if you watch players when they're in those grit situations, they lose vision. They get very tunnel vision. They lose the vision. Not be, it, because they're so focused on being able to control that you know space around them, the bubble space that's around them. They become so f- focused on that, it becomes difficult to see all the other options. So the one, they lose lose vision. Two, they turn their back too quickly. So that those become an issue, and then they have a hard time because they're gripping the stick, being able to make like skill plays. Skill is very it it's supple. Like it it has. You know, you're 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 you have soft hands. You have soft shoulders. You, you know, you you can slip a puck. You can, you know, you're you're putting a puck into an area pass. You're saucing it. Saucing it is a is a is an area pass. You're throwing it into a space, having people in. That's a high level. That's high level puck control. Well, when you were teaching players to be grit on top of the puck. We also have to maintain vision and be able to make slips and subtle little plays because we don't need to pass the puck incredibly hard. I think players tend to pass the puck way too hard, especially when you get to the lower levels. They're they're really pass the puck too hard, and it, one, where it really, if you really want to see this really at uh, like really bubble up to the surface, is watch a female hockey game at a relatively high level and what you will see is they tend to struggle shooting pucks off the pass and the reason for that for me is because they pass the puck entirely too hard to each other they zip the puck over there when the play requires a person's trying to shoot it off the pass this puck should be a puck that they can shoot off the pass they tend to zip it over there way too hard and it makes it difficult. So we tend to say, well, we, we tend to focus on the shooter, that the shooter is not able to make that play when really I think it's the passer. The passer is not able 
to read the weight of the puck to get there so that the person on the other end can go, can shoot it. When you really look at great passers, they don't really pass it like they don't pass it hard like that as often as we think. They do pass it hard at times, but when it's really skilled and they're trying to make a play to somebody, it's it's an easy puck. The person on the other end is getting an easy puck. And that's heaviness on a puck. How heavy do we need to pass the puck? And I think we can teach that in some of these mentalities that we're talking about here. First, let's invite pressure in and then move it. Before it even gets before it even gets all jammed up and bottled up, let's not even bother with that. Let's get it. Or like let's focus on first touch. So puck gets laid into the defenseman's corner. Instead of the defenseman trying to figure out how to escape the pressure all the time, just bump it. Invite the pressure one way, bump it the other way to your partner, we're out. Like simple little bumps of learning how to the weight of the puck uh, to be able to make us under a lot of pressure and a lot of duress, can we make skilled plays which have the right weight on it so someone can skate onto it or someone can shoot off of it or someone can move into space easily with it. Um, those types of things I think are really important to focus on. And so um, that's, that's where I wanted to go as it related to this book was try to talk about some of those things because I think those pieces get missed when we talk about heaviness on top of the puck. There is a need for it. Players need to become learn to become heavier, but there's a lot of things that I think we miss along the way when we're teaching it, and we tend to just focus on the physical confrontation of the heaviness when there's so many other things that we could teach where they could become infinitely more difficult to play against without having to have that as their primary skill.